Welcome into the Chris Hatcher Show. I'm Kevin Young, filling in for Kevin Blackwell here with Coach Hatcher. Coach Hatcher, let's start off with the Citadel game. Great first half, kind of disappointing second half. You want to walk us through kind of this, the quick start and then what happened down at the stretch? Well, uh, it's good to have you on the hosting the show today. Uh, you know, we, we go on the road playing a very tough environment. Um, Citadel, homecoming, homecoming 13,000 folks there. Um, what a tremendous environment that they had on Saturday. But we come out of the gates fast. Um, we score on our two opening possessions of the game. Um, defensively, we're playing well. Um, you could just feel that we're playing with a lot of confidence. Going to the half 24-7. Um, you know, no lead is comfortable. We know that. We make our adjustments. Um, and then I think the, the turning point of the ball game came on the first drive um, of the third quarter. We force a fumble. Um, we have a, a quick three and out and miss a field goal to put the score up 27 to 7, which um, just from a momentum standpoint, you know, it, it's always good to, to score first in the third quarter. Um, and then Citadel breaks a long run, and then all of a sudden you could feel the momentum shifting. Um, I thought we played tight there in the fourth quarter. Um, we had plenty of opportunities to make plays, um, but at the end of the day, um, they outscored us 35 to three um, in the um, in the in the second half, and um, it just was a very disappointing day. Um, you know, we had worked so hard to get back into contention. Um, and to play so well for a half and then kind of give it away at the end of the game is very disappointing. And that's what we did. You take your hat off to the Citadel, but we did not play very well the second half, did not deserve to win the ball game. Um, and um, it, it's very disappointing um, in, in, in that defeat. Saw a lot of bright spots still out on the field. Defensive line played harsh. Roberts did a fantastic job all game long, kind of creating in the backfield. Speak to the effort of those guys. You know, it's kind of a depleted defense. Not many people know that, but it is a defense that was depleted all year. Oh, well, you know, I, I take my hat off to those guys. Um, defensively, I thought we played really well all the way to the very end. We started missing some tackles. Um, you know, could that have been we were playing tight? Could have been we were just tired? You know, I don't know. But defensively, I thought that we played very well all year. Um, if you watch the game, you notice there was very little substitutions taking place. Um, but I thought that our defensive line um, played extremely well. And you, you got to realize this, um, Ahmad Gooden did not play. Um, um, we did not play. Justin Foster did not play. Brett Granger didn't even travel. All those guys due to injury. Um, the secondary's been depleted. Jordan Montgomery, Coy Freeman, Sam Petway, Ty Herring got in sparingly, but um, he's, been, he's been beat up. Will Bryant, of course, went down with the, the tough ankle injury over Walford. So um, <laughs> we're, we're playing a very thin lineup over there, but the guys that played, they played really well. I'm really proud because they had to play a lot of snaps on Saturday. All right, thanks, Coach. You talked about all year we've talked about record breaking and things like that. And one thing we don't want to overlook is Kelvin McKnight's, you know, setting the Sanford touchdown record in the win against the Citadel. What has he been kind of like to coach this year? And, and we really saw it in the Florida State game. We saw it all year long. Um, well, KJ's a tremendous player. Um, you know, he was one of the first guys that we signed when I got here. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he's just come in from day one and, and, and been a really productive player for us. Um, it's been a lot of fun watching him grow and develop. Um, he's a guy that puts the extra hours in each and every day. He takes great care of his body. Um, and and it's, it's kind of funny, why is this guy an All-American? Why is this guy a record setter? Um, because he, he works extremely hard when nobody's around. And, 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 and to me, that's what makes great players great. So um, any recognition, any record that he breaks is very well deserving. Um, you know, you know we, we, we know that Duck is, is close on his as well. Um, but, you know, you, you think about it over the course of four years. I mean, you got to give credit to all the offensive right. linemen, all the running backs, all the other wide receivers. Um, who have played a part in it. You got to give great credit to the defense for getting three and outs, getting the ball to the offense. So um, even though we highlight those great individual accomplishments, it took a lot of people to help them get to where they're at right now. And, um, and you know, I've been really proud of this team. Um, you know, we started the season one and four. I think um, headed into the Western Carolina game that we would have all voted to be six and five at the end of the year and call it a great year. Um, even though things didn't go well last week, if you, you look at the intestinal fortitude mm -hmm. of this team, one and four, 
to get back to even right now with a chance for our eighth consecutive winning season speaks volumes about the character of this football team. You took my question out of my mouth there on, on getting to that winning season and, and, the, and the, you know, the strength and the test of fortitude this team has shown bouncing back each time and each time. Looking ahead to ETSU, there's a big bounce back then. Playing for 500 and getting a winning percentage gear, taking them out of an outright SOCON championship. There's a lot on the line that, that this team still has a lot to play for. And, and how do you guys prepare for that? Uh, well, we, we talked in, in a great length on Monday about, um, you know, what happened. I mean, we laid the facts out. Hey, guys, we blew the game on Saturday. Um, but um, but you, you, you can't hope for a better yesterday. you got to have a great day today. And um, I thought that our first practice of the week went very well. Um, you know, we got a bunch of seniors that this will be the last time they suit up. Um, you know, if you look around, um, winning more than, than getting beat mm -hmm. is um, – it's hard to do. I mean, you know, you, you go around the country, th there's very few teams that win 9, 10, 11 games a year. You know, I always like to say that we're fighting for bowl eligibility. You know, <laughs> even um, even if um, if guys don't, um, we don't have a bowl game to play for, um, you know, being bowl eligible is, is what most teams shoot for right. each and every year. Um, so th th there's there's always something to play for, and it's called pride. Yeah, and it's, it's what we get paid to do as coaches and scholarship players. You got to represent your university with the best you got each week. So you take all the other stuff out, you're playing for sure pride this week. But little toppings there, winning season. Right. Eighth one in a row if we were to win Saturday. Send the seniors out with a victory. Um, and then... To me, it's just the way the season started. Let's finish up on a high note, have a winning season. That would be a great story to tell. I completely agree with you, Coach. Kind of before we get out of here, one last kind of question. We, we touched on Devlin's records. Um, that is something that, that goes to a whole team, to a whole program over year, over year. And, and offense coordinators, play callers, offense alignment, everybody in there that, that does have a stakeholder. And then I think he'd be one of the first to tell you on that. It, is the record there is it noticeable is it something that's thought about or is it just let's just go win a ball game um no I, you know you know i mean of course i'm very well aware of it because you send out all the stuff <laughs> on it i mean if you follow sanford football and you don't know that's <laughs> down the coming down the pike um you're not following us very closely but um you know it is we talked about it at the beginning of the season i haven't mentioned it since then um you know it is something that i would like to see happen um, but at the end of the day, it's my job to help us win ball games. And but I see it say it each and every week. Um, you know, if if he needs to break the record in order for us to win the ball game on Saturday, um, so you know, again, um, you know, we're we're throwing it a bunch. That's what we do right now. Um, you know, we almost we threw it 69 times on Saturday. So you know, we'll just have to wait and see. But the goal this week is to like it is every week to play to the very best of our ability. Um, we go on the road, hostile environment. You know, they're going to be juiced. They're playing mm -hmm. for the conference championship. Um, it's a stadium that we've never been in. Um, it's going to be cold. Mm -hmm. You know, we've discussed all this. Um, so w no pressure on us. we got to go up there and let it all hang out and see what happens. Thanks, Coach. Thanks for joining us on this, this episode of the Chris Hatcher Show. <laughs>